Hello and welcome to Captain's Dry Dock. And in the Dry Dock today, I'm showing you how to make a first order Stormtrooper belt from scratch. Let's make it real. So I already made a belt for my completed armor. However, this is a revisit. I wanna go back and remake that belt because I wasn't really happy of how I put it all together. Now the original parts were actually bought from Imperial Belts. Correction, belts of the first order. Well, it comes in a pack, all disassembled, and then you just make it to fit your body. However, rather than actually buy another pack, I know all the materials I need to use. So this video is all about if you want to make one from scratch yourself, and if you can get the parts cheaper, this is how you do it. 50 millimeter wide black webbing for the base, 50 millimeter wide and six millimeter thick rubber strip to give it depth, Chicago screws to secure the layers at the ends, and a 50 millimeter webbing buckle to fasten it all together. Now the most difficult thing to source for this belt was the ribbed outer layer, which goes all the way around the waist. Now I looked everywhere online and I found some examples, but the ribbing was not quite right until I went onto a forum of Stormtrooper armor builders and they told me, in fact, that strip of ribbed rubber came from a non-slip mat. Who would have thought that Stormtroopers are walking doormats and so I bought an entire roll of this material and then cut it into strips. This project is great if you're on a budget. Now it all depends on where you source your materials. Now for me there's no hardware stores anywhere where I live anymore to get this type of thing. So I had to go on eBay which meant it cost a little bit more than I actually predicted because I needed to buy a minimum length of what I required. So if you do have a hardware store near you or you can find an equivalent which is in your shed by all means you can do that and you can make this a very cheap price. The size of the belt is measured around the armour and not my waist as its function is mainly aesthetic rather than holding up my trousers. Now I was being an idiot here as it would have been easier to measure on the outside of the armour rather than the inside as it's pretty much the same measurement. Then I cut the webbing slightly longer as I was going to need as it needed to be threaded through the buckle. A top tip here, when cutting for the webbing, make sure it's sealed off at the edges with some heat, otherwise it will fray later. I'll explain later. Using a sewing machine, I stitched the loop together to secure it. To cut the rib mat to size, I used a 6mm rubber strip to work out the correct rib to slice down slowly and carefully following the line all the way down with a standing knife. The rubber isn't porous and will not take glue well, so I roughened the surface with sandpaper so the glue had something to bite into. Before I glued it all together, I added two snaps into the webbing, one on the front and on the back to secure the belt to the corresponding snaps on my armour. That's a very good question. Why on earth do I have a car tyre indoors when I'm building a belt? Well, quite simply, I need the curvature of the tyre so I can put the belt on as I glue all the layers down together to give it that curved form all the way around my waist. Now, it just so happened to be a car tyre. I didn't have anything else in the household which had a nice curved surface to it. And also, I don't mind if this tyre gets mucked up as well because I'm gonna be using a lot of super glue. As well as super glue, I used an accelerant to speed up the process as I couldn't stick it all in one go. The first layer is the webbing with the 6mm rubber strip glued on top of it, while being careful not to apply too much that it would leak out the sides and make it look really messy. Then ribbed strip sandwiches the thick rubber strip. Note that this is a slightly longer than the previous layers, so it leaves a little flap that hides the buckle underneath. Chicago screws are used to mechanically secure the ends. Now to make the holes in thick rubber is surprisingly difficult as rubber self seals when pierced. So I made a drill bit that cuts a hole out by removing the material. This I did by getting a piece of metal tube and cutting notches in the ends with a dremel and thereby making teeth. This worked a treat and I was left with perfect holes. The last thing that finishes off the belt are the belt boxes and there's plenty of them of all different shapes and sizes on the belt itself. Now most armour kits out there do come with belt boxes but I have to say most of them are inaccurate and so I wanted to go back and actually remade these on Fusion 360, 3D print them, paint them and slap them on my belt. And in fact those files are easily downloadable, link down below if you want a set for yourself. The two front boxes use large bolts to fix into the belt with rounded heads so not to dig into me. The right side boxes just use threaded bungee cords. 
and the left pouches are just slipped on using their loops. These canvas pouches are aftermarket parts I bought from Trooper Bay, but I made bespoke 3D printed liners so it kept their shapes. I'm really happy that I revisited this part of the armor and rebuilt it because it's much better than my first attempt. And hopefully this tutorial will help you make your own, if not on a much smaller budget and get the same result. Now, if you really enjoyed this episode, so this is all this YouTuber fluff, click on the subscribe button down below, leave a comment, any questions, I'll be happy to actually answer them. But in the meantime, my name's John Child, this is Captain's Dry Dock, you stay safe, take care, and I hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Really? <laughs>